You've chosen Costa Rica as a country you want to spend and enjoy some time in. Good choice. Regardless of the region you choose, you'll be surrounded by natural beauty, jungles, beaches, and waterfalls. This video is aimed at pointing out some of the differences between two regions of Costa Rica, that being Tamarindo and Drake Bay on the Osa Peninsula. We've had the good fortune of spending three months in Tamarindo and six months on the Osa Peninsula. We'll take you through the differences based on our experiences there. This is Plan Free, the channel that illustrates a location-independent lifestyle and shows you how to get it for yourself. My name is Air Miller. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and click the like button if you like what we're talking about on this channel. Tamarindo and Drake Bay Osa Peninsula probably couldn't be more different while still being within the same country of Costa Rica. You've got two completely different lifestyles with Tamarindo being a surf beach town lifestyle compared to the Osa Peninsula, which is renowned for its wildlife and its jungle setting. Which leads me to my first point of differences between these two locations. Let's talk about something probably everyone is interested in, and that being the beaches. In Tamarindo, you're going to be living literally on or very near the beach. Oftentimes, you'll be able to walk to Playa Tamarindo and or Playa Langosta. Or if you're staying slightly away from the beach, you're probably looking at a five or 10 minute car ride or let's say a 15 minute bicycle ride and you're at the beach. Compare that to living on the Osa <laughs> Peninsula where you're probably looking at, let's say a 30 to 60 minute car ride to get to one of the surrounding beaches. When you compare the beaches themselves, there are some excellent beaches available in the Osa Peninsula region. However, I would say that Playa Tamarindo and Playa Langosta are some of the most enjoyable multi-purpose beaches that I had the opportunity to enjoy in Costa Rica. Both Playa Tamarindo and Playa Langosta are gradual, so they're good for all different activities and age groups, and yet they both have a surf break to different degrees. So in addition to being able to sunbathe and swim and wade in the water, you can surf, kneeboard, body surf. In addition, there's half decent fishing right from the beach. Let's touch on wildlife. Costa Rica as a whole is rich in this department. They'll have excellent birds and insects, reptiles, Larger animals like monkeys are common all over the place in Costa Rica. Even walking up and down the streets of Tamarindo, seeing howler monkeys is a common occurrence. However, Osa Peninsula takes the wildlife to another level and it's renowned within Costa Rica for its diversity and density of wildlife, and rightly so. In this region, a lot of the time you're gonna be enveloped by jungles. Sometimes the only passage up and down will be via river. You'll just see more of all of the wildlife available in Costa Rica. You'll see more monkeys and more species of. You'll see things like anteaters, sloths. You'll see more birds. So if wildlife is one of your main interests, the Osa Peninsula would be a wise choice for you over the beach life of Tamarindo. Climate and rainfall. Obviously the climate is gonna be mostly similar between these two regions, but there are some important differences that you might find valuable to know about. While Costa Rica as a whole has a rainy season, the Osa Peninsula has two and a half times the annual rainfall that Tamarindo has, and it's noticeable. So in Tamarindo, in comparison to almost every other place that I've been in the country, it could be classified as rather dry, where it rains sparingly. So during the rainy season in Tamarindo, you might have rain showers that last up to an hour, during the day and then it's sunshine immediately after or let's say up to two hours in the nighttime. When you compare that with Osa Peninsula, sometimes it would rain there for two and three days at a time and much heavier and harder. So if you're someone that prefers not to be rained on, Tamarindo would be the choice for you over Osa Peninsula. Now with that said, with all the rain that Osa Peninsula receives, it's one of the factors that leads to the health of the rainforest in the Osa Peninsula area, and also the diversity and density of the wildlife in that region. Access to products and services. While the cost of living in Costa Rica is not necessarily cheap, I would put it say on par with Canada, for example, the two regions will give you different access to diversity of products and services. So in Tamarindo, you're usually going to be shopping in some grocery stores that are local to the town, 
Or if you want to take a day and drive to Liberia, you can get into some bigger, more diverse grocery stores. But you're still within the realm of Costa Rica products and services and corresponding cost of living. Now, when you're staying in and around the Osa Peninsula, for example, let's say you're staying in Sierpe or Palmar Norte or somewhere like that, within a reasonable drive, let's say the similar amount of time you would have to drive to Liberia from Tamarindo, in a similar drive that you'd be making from Tamarindo to go get to the bigger center to get groceries, you can drive from the Osa Peninsula area to a place called Pasa Canoas, which is basically the border between Costa Rica and Panama. And now you've got access to a lot of the things that Panama offers, both from a product diversity standpoint and from a better cost of living standpoint, a better price point. It's very common for people staying and living in the southern portion of Costa Rica, Osa Peninsula area to regularly drive down to Pasa Canoas for most or all of their goods and services. Just because, as I mentioned earlier, you have a much broader selection of products and services, usually at a significantly better price than you would be able to get in Costa Rica proper. If you desire a laid back beach town surf atmosphere that doesn't get rained on as much as some of the other areas of the country, Tamarindo might be for you. On the other hand, if your main interests are things like rainforests and wildlife, jungles, humidity, then Osa Peninsula and Drake Bay area would probably be a better choice. The good news for you if you're staying in Costa Rica is regardless of which region you pick, you can drive to the other lifestyle within a reasonable amount of time. What I mean by that is if you're staying in the beach town of Tamarindo, you can drive within a reasonable time frame, let's say three to five hours, and you can be immersed in the jungle lifestyle. Conversely, if you're staying in Osa Peninsula, you'd be surrounded by jungle every day, but within an hour or two, you could drive to one of the area's beautiful beaches. In a perfect world, you would have enough time to, let's say, split your time between these two types of locations. But if you had to choose one or the other, hopefully this video helps in your decision process to pick the one that's best for you based on your interests. This is Plan Free, the channel that illustrates a location independent lifestyle and shows you how to get it. If you like the video, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. We've been playing a fun game this year in that we're going to donate 10 cents for every new subscriber that Plan Free gains for the rest of 2021. So if you'd like a free way to make us give our money away, click the subscribe button and see if you can bankrupt us this year. We'll hopefully be making videos here in the near future, sharing with you all how we've given this money away. We'll see you again soon in the next video. Bye for now.